All right. Well, welcome to the first Fridays with Fiscal of 2020. Um, we are going to be talking about the dynamic sorting, the new dynamic sort options today. And um, before I actually hop into looking at those options, you know, I usually start on the wiki. I figured today um, I would just have this page pulled up for the training and registration. Um, I'm sure that this is where you all registered for this session. We sent it out in the email. Um, but we do have the registrations out here for the future Fridays with Fiscal as well. So um, you register right through this link. When we finish the session, the recording is going to end up on this same page. So that will end up over here on this grid. And if you um, are on this page and you want to quickly get back to any of our previous uh, recorded webinars, there is a little note right at the top here that says, um, please click here, and that will take you to the previous grid with the recordings. So I'm going to start, we're going to look at the sort option in USPS and in um, USAS today. So I'm going to start in USPS and look at it there, and then we'll kind of switch over. The options um, are the same. They're added to both sides of the software. So uh, this is going to be consistent as we look at it on both sides. Um, ooh, the one more thing I wanted to show on the wiki actually is if I just go back to our main page. Uh, we did put the documentation out here, so uh, a lot of what we're going to talk about kind of spelled out. We have some screenshots, so um, I'll go into USAS, but it is in the same spot um, in both sets of documentation. So if you go to the report section and the report manager, and then um, made sure it had a title so that you could get it right uh, you could jump there right from this menu. So report generation options and dynamic sort. If we go to this section, it's going to talk about each one of these tabs on the generate window, which is what we're going to be looking at, um, and kind of goes through what each one of those tabs is for. And when we get to the new one for the sort options, it breaks it down um, a bit more as well. We also did just put out the newsletter uh, this week, and that has uh, a highlight, has an article about this new report options. Um, Michelle even made a video, so that I think it would be really great for um, the districts if they're wanting to like see a little demo on how this works or read about it in the news in the newsletter. Okay, so now we'll jump in. So let's go to USPS. Um, this option that I'm going to be talking about, um, it, when you generate the report, um, people had kind of wanted, we had had some feedback with creating the reports and having the sort and subtotal. Um, if you wanted to change that sort or subtotal previously, you could take the template report, modify it, and then save a new version of that report with your desired setup. Um, any reports that have already been created will still work. They'll work with this option. Those will still be there. But this does help eliminate the need to create some of those template reports. So um, if you have a district that's wanting to um, sort a different way, then they or you at the ITC don't necessarily have to create a whole new template report. So I think this option is going to make things a lot easier. and. Um, I, I think our Wave 5 districts, like, it's just going to change the whole game as far as how they even, I think, view the reports um, and having to create them. So um, I'm going to go into the employee hired report here. And because I was playing in here, I'm just going to set this back to my default options. Uh, we'll see in a minute, but uh, just like how the reports um, you're used to it saving if you put in a filter or something. These options will save in your most recent. Um, so we have three tabs. Instead of just having this one long page, it's kind of split up and organized into these um, little mini pages. Report options, query options, and then the sort options. And I could switch pages by clicking each one of these tabs. Or there is little arrow icons down at the bottom here that would allow us to just kind of flip through the pages. 
So those do the same thing. It's, it's pretty much just a preference to have a couple different ways to do it. The report options, pretty basic. This is something that, um, you know, if it's a district that's been in here before, they're used to seeing these. They can choose the format. Um, they could give the report a title on the top. And then you have, you know, your summary and your report options if you wanted to have um, that cover page on there. Query options, this is going to be the query parameters that are written into a report, um, basically your filters. Um, so this is the tab that's going to determine what data will actually show on the report if, it want, if it's narrowed down you know, here by start date or end date. Um, once we get into the USAS reports, those generally have a bit more filters on them or um, query parameters. And then this third one here is um, the big one. This is the one that's, that's actually got you know, a new, um, new options to look at uh, other than what they would kind of see on how the reports were previously. And it's broken down into two parts on this page. So you have your sortable properties and selected properties. Now when you come in here, um, sometimes you will see selected properties. You'll already have some options over here. And that's going to be determined by the actual setup on the report. So um, when that, if you were to go in that report template and look at the actual report definition and how it's set up in there, if there is a primary, secondary sort or any control breaks that are written in to that um, default report, they would automatically show. This one doesn't have any, so this one doesn't have anything um, defined by, um, like in the standard report. So um, what we do is, uh, if we want to add some of these, we're going to move these properties from the left side over to the right side. And how we do that is um, we can do a click and drag. So I just click last name, drag it over. If I don't want it, I can click and drag it back. The check boxes would allow you to drag multiple things at a time. So if I wanted last name and first name, I could click those and just drag them over and drop them. Same thing if I wanted to remove everything, select it all and drag it back. Now, a couple quirks to get used to. Um, really, it's just this click and drag function um, is that when you click and drag it over, you have the option to put whatever you want anywhere within the list. But once they're over here, we can't reorder. So once you know that, you can be strategic about where um, what you're dragging when basically. So if I have last name, first name, and you know, I want first name to be first, then I can drag it back over. And then when I bring it to the list, I can choose where to put it. So I don't have to like take everything out and start over again. I just have to take the one thing that I want to reorder and move it back and then move it where I want it. Or when you're, or when you're pulling them over originally, if you know that in advance, then it makes it a bit easier, you know. Um, so let's see. So I think we'll do, let's do that again, because I do actually want first name to be the second, and then last name will be the first sort on there. Um, when I have the properties over here, it is a hierarchy. So whatever is at the top is going to be the primary sort. So this is going to sort first on last name and then secondary on first name within that. It's automatically checked to sort um, ascending to descending, so A to Z or uh, smallest to largest. But if we uncheck this, then it would be descending, so it would be the opposite. Okay. 
I also have the control break function within here. So this works the same as it does when you're writing a report or um, customizing a report. Is if I click control break, that is going to make um, that property uh, basically that control header. It makes the header for it, and then it would summarize underneath anything that matches um, that uh, whatever the property is. So last name doesn't really make sense. We're, we probably won't need it for that. Um, but if you needed it for if you wanted a page break so that you know each last name is in, is on a new page. And then the other thing, um, back to the control break real quick, is if you do have um, groups that where there are totals, then the control break gives a header. But if it's written to um, have a sum unrelated properties, then you would get subtotals with that control break too. So let's look at, I'm going to run a quick report here because I feel like it's good to see some examples. So I'm just going to put in put in a date here and then we'll go ahead and generate this. So we have our standard report sorted by last name, and then if anybody has the same last name, it'll go to the first name next. Now that's our really basic one. Um, if I come back in here, go back to our employee hired report, um, I have most recent, so it did save options. It saved you know, the um, query parameter that I put in here, but it also saved my sort options. So next, I want to get a little bit more fancy, and let's take this position description and pull it up to the top. We'll make this the first sort now, and I'm also going to do a control break on that so we can break up this report a little bit. Let's go ahead and generate. And there we go. So now we have this categorized. We have the heading on here now for the control break, and all of these people fit this category. Now this would have taken you know, a customization of a report and you'd have a separate report definition from your SSDT report uh, with the previous you know, way that, we would, that reports would function. So that was like, what, two clicks to go ahead and add this and now I have it um, you know, within my report, um, which actually brings me to um, a kind of a way that they can save these in a sense. Um, my report saves this as the most recent. So this is my um, broken down by position description. If uh, this is something that like the district would use often, now they're not saving it as a separate report, but they do have this save and recall option at the top. So once I enter these in here, um, I can come in and say, and I'm going to save this with the save button. And now I have this up in my save and recall. So the next time I come into this report, I don't have to go change that sort option again. I can just pick this and then um, you do have to be careful because it will save, um, save all of the parameters. So it saved my date too, which I didn't want that. Take it out, save my save and recall, and then um, I do still have my sort in there. So I think that save and recall um, is going to become even more handy. Uh, it makes me think of in classic, you know, there was an option. Uh, some districts use it. I don't know if all of them did, but there there was an option to basically save your parameters within the reports, and then. Um, it would save, you know, your most recent, just standard, you know, when you go in there, but um, you could pull up a list of like saved parameters. So this would be um, the same idea as that. OK. 
Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is just these sortable properties that we have on our list, um, everything that ends up in this box. These do correspond to the properties that are on the report. So um, when we look at that report, you know, we have the position description, the name, the employee number, and the hire date. Those are all things that are contained on the report, and that's why they're available to be sorted on. There is a way to add properties, um, you know, maybe if you want it for a sort, but you don't want it on the actual report, and we're going to take a look at how to do that. Um, we'll see some of the USAS reports have fields like that on there. In USPS, usually, I mean, I think normally on this side, it makes sense to just be sorting on what you have on the report. Um, because you're going to want to see it, you know, if you're, if you're doing a control break on it or um, you're listing those things out, generally you're also wanting to see them on the report. Um, and then the other thing too is I was kind of hovering over these, but when I do, you'll notice that you do have this pop-up um, that gives you that little tool tip. So that can come in handy sometimes. I know with um, like the report writer, I generally use it. And then in here, it's nice because you can um, still see that path. So you know the hire date is coming from the employee um, age, the last name, first name. And so if you just need more detail on maybe one of, where one of those fields is coming from, um, you do still have that little tooltip option if you hover. Do we have any questions so far? Okay. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to switch to USAS, and then we're going to look at another example there and talk about, um, you know, maybe how to modify these if you need to do that. So this time, let's go into um, our budget summary report. So I'm just going to the standard generate option. And on this side, we have um, the same kind of layout. We have our tabs that we can click through um, or the little arrows at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and reset my default again since I was playing in here before. Um, we started. All right, and on this one, uh, let me see what I have in here. I should probably put in a fund so I don't forget and run a large report because eh, it happens. <laughs> Um, all right, so then we're going right to this last page to the sort options to look at this. Now, um, this one we can see by default, I do have some select properties already in here, and I do have a control break defined, so those are things defined within the standard report definition. Uh, this one, the hover does come in handy too because um, you have the, full, the cash account is the full account code for the cash account. So if I hover, I can see that first one um, is actually the cash account. And then the full account code um, in the second one is going to be the expenditure account. I think that these options, this new sort feature comes in handy, especially on reports like a budget summary. Um, I know that there are many flavors of this one that districts use. Uh, sometimes they want it to be broken down by um, OPU or object, or you know maybe they're looking at um, specific groups of functions. So um, I think for our example, we'll scroll down here. Um, this one has these additional properties that we can choose to add a sort on. Um, and it does even include these little shortcut um, sorts that were added um, a, while, a while back, maybe a couple months ago, six months. Um, 
that would allow us to sort just on like the first digit. So if I wanted it to just be by uh, objects at the one digit level, so everything that's a 100, everything that's a 200, um, et cetera, I could use this, um, I could use one of these um, digit level sorts. But for this one, let's stick kind of standard. I think I'm going to bring the OPU over. And I'm going to make this like my second control break. So I'm just making sure that it's highlighted um, underneath my cash account, but above my expenditure account. And I'll drop it right in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and control break on that. So um, that'll be sort of my uh, second subtotal within each fund, fund special coffiner. And let's generate this. So just as easy as that, we basically um, did what would have been creating a new report before. All right, so um, I have my full account code here, and then I have, all right, here's my first OPU. And I only have one within this fund, so whoops. Um, but we can see it does add the subtotals for all of these uh, columns that were set to have a total on them. So now we have an additional total for um, if we had multiple OPUs, we would have one for each OPU. So you know what, that was kind of boring. Let's, let's go do the um, by one digit level just so we can see some variety here. Um, so I went back in, hopped directly to my sort options. It saved what I did last time, but you know what, I want to drag this one back over and um, object one digit level. Just drop that right in the middle there and give it a control break. Okay, there we go. So now um, I have my secondary heading here. There's my all of my 100 object codes with the subtotal, all of my 200. I'll, just, I'll try not to scroll too much here. Um, but I think that makes it pretty quick and easy. Um, the the functions with like the drag and drop, you know, once you get used to that too, and you're kind of uh, have a plan for where you're going, where you're bringing that new function in, um, it does have that blue highlight bar. So it's pretty um, easy to tell where you're, where you're gonna end up um, with that property when you bring it in. There is, um, one thing I wanted to mention with this, right now there is a bug that we're working on um, fixing. So um, Mark and the team are on that, but I just uh, wanted to mention this in case you run into it and how to get around it at this point. Um, so this report I started, I had my full account code, uh, I'm sorry, I had my cash account and my full account code, and these are the standard default options, and there's a control break written in. So if the base account has a control break already. Um, where you might run into a bug is if you were to just take away that control break that already exists and then try and add a control break, try and like add a completely new one. Um, if we run this, then it would still kind of hold on to that default control break. So what we would do to get around it is if you have something that has a default control break, I'm just grabbing this property and bringing it back over. Um, instead of leaving it in your sortable properties, because see when we bring it back over, it still wants to control break. Um, so instead of taking it off completely, you want to put it back on as the lowest sort and uncheck the control break. And if you do run into that and um, 
you know, it's, it's kind of a weird one, so it, and it might happen randomly. So if you do run into that one, let us know. We can help you out with the, with the workaround there. Um, but yeah, so this one, so now it would, um, here, let's generate this real quick. So now instead of the fund uh, special cost center for the cash account, now this just changes this to the fund. And the second sort's going to be on the full account code. So having that cash account at the bottom really doesn't end up impacting anything because you're already um, basically sorted more detailed than that. Let's see. Um, And then just for good measure, since I was in here, um, we looked at the save and recall on the USPS report, but that absolutely is still an option um, within the USAS side. And you can see I already have one of these saved in here, but um, if I want to go ahead and make this a separate save and recall, I can go ahead and save that. And I think, yeah, I, I definitely think that that, if that's not something um, that, I'm not sure how much districts are using that now, but I think, you know, even if they weren't um, really making those save and recalls before, I think that this is gonna be even more relevant now. Um, and they may end up with a whole list of them in here for each kind of different sort. Um, if there's something that they sort a certain way with a specific fund or filter, you know, they could enter all of that into their parameters and then um, save it to be recalled later. Well, the next thing we're going to do is actually open one of these reports up in the report writer and take a look at um, adding a property or even just what this kind of looks like within the report writer. So before we get there, um, this generate view, do we have any questions that have come up? Anything else that we want to talk about or look at uh, before we leave this, this page? quiet today. Well, that's okay. Um, yeah, as we're going, if you think of something, um, let me know. Feel free to pipe up. Um, so we, uh, if we want to look at editing a report template, um, we would still come into this report manager, and um, this is basically going to look the same, which I, I wasn't sure when, you know, when I heard about this option, I was like, wow, it seems like it would be a lot harder to write reports if it's got all of these options written in. Um, but it was a great, you know, great for me to come in here and I was like, wow, okay, this is so familiar. Um, it's basically the same thing and we can actually see that little page right within here. So I come in to edit a report. I have my same um, properties page here. I can configure the filters. And then when I look at this little preview of generating the report, I actually have my three tabs that I can view. So I still will see exactly what this will look like um, once I modify it and I can see what it would look like for um, you know, any user that were to come in and run this report. This one um, I wanna point out does have this default. So this has, a default sort on full account code. It doesn't have a control break or anything, but I came into a cache summary here. So um, when we're seeing this, if I go back over to the select properties tab, I have my full account code and it's sort priority one. So that is why it's showing as the default on my um, sort options when I open up that generate report. And if I had, um, you know, if I had a second or third sort on here, so let's just add a couple random ones.
go over to generate the report, then those would be in that default box. So those little um, numerical drop downs are what's dictating what is being seen um, by default on there. The other thing that we can see on this page is that um, all of these properties that we have in this list, that is what is going to be in that in the left side of that page. That's what we have the option to choose. So I'm just going to go back here real quick. All of these things correspond to those properties. So we have the option to choose to drag these over when we write the report. Now, some of the reports that have accounts on them, like that last report we looked at with the budget summary, that had a whole bunch more properties over there because the account code, you know, it, it's in this one property where you can see a full account code, or on this one it's the cash account, but even on the expenditure, it's all together in that one column. Um, so the pieces of the account code broken down were added as separate properties over to the sortable properties, but we didn't really want them to show on the, on the report again. Um, so if you do need to add something to these properties um, to be able to sort on, all you would do is come to your report definition, um, go to the select properties, and then choose something else that you want to uh, be able to sort on or uh, control break by, and then you would just add it to your report. Mm. Try and find something random here. So we'll add some additional things. Now, adding these on this page, we'll add them as a column to our report. So if I were to run this cash summary now, I'm now going to have, you know, column, a column with the checkbox for active, um, you know, a column for the date and a column for the EMIS fund category. And I might want that. So, you know, if you do, if you're adding things to the report, um, then you could just leave it at that step. And those, those properties will now show up in the left side of that sort box. So let's go back over there. So if we scroll down, we now have these things and, um, you know, if I save this, then when somebody goes to run my report, they could come over here and, you know, add that as um, a control break or as a sort on that report. You know what, actually, I am going to generate this real quick so we can just have a visual of what I'm talking about here. So see, we have these extra columns now. If you want to use those things for a sort, but you don't actually want to add those extra columns, we'll go back over to the select properties. And what I would do is I would just come in here, use my extended properties, which is these three little dots, and I'm just going to suppress that. So go in my three little dots, this little checkbox for suppressed. All right, and then when I come over to generate, if I go back to the sort options here, I can see I still have these available for a sort. But when I generate this report, now I won't have those extra columns. There we go.
And then let's see, so I saved this up. I'm just going to go back to my home page real quick. And um, let's see, here's my cash summary too. So if I open this up, um, I have the option there for um, to have the active, to have the date, the UMIS fund category, um, to add those on. Does anybody have questions about modifying the reports or the sort properties? Any thoughts about the new feature in general? Okay. It looks good. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Well, thank you. <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks for, for the feedback. Oh, we have a chat message. It looks great, too. Good. That's good to hear. I, I appreciate you speaking up because I think, I don't know, it's just, it's a really exciting feature. I hope that this makes it easier for your districts. I think, you know, especially, um, I mean, I think the districts that are on redesign are going to like it, but especially going into a new wave, um, I hope this makes your training a bit easier too. Well, that's all I have. So um, I'll hang out for a minute. If anybody else can uh, think of any other questions or anything else you want to see, please let me know. But um, if not, we are set. I hope everyone has a great weekend. And um, our next Fridays with Fiscal, I think, is next month. So we'll see you then. All right. Have a good one. <laughs>